everybody, it's Rachel from Rachel is Knitting, and in today's video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about using the Ravelry Q feature. Before we get started, I do want to forewarn you that I do show screen recordings of the Ravelry platform in this video, so if Ravelry causes harm to you, please click out of this video, and I'll see you next time. All right, here we are on the Ravelry homepage. Today, I'll be telling you all about how to use the Ravelry Q. So first, let's go over how to access your Q. Take your mouse to the upper right hand corner and hover over the My Notebook option. You'll see from there you can select Q from the drop down menu. But before we look at the Q specifically, I want to show you an organic way that I utilize the Q when searching for patterns. So I'm taking my mouse to the advanced search option at the top of the screen and clicking on it. This brings up all of the patterns available for purchase or download on Ravelry. Now let's say you're scoping out patterns and one catches your eye. Let's go with the Stromboli by Caitlin Hunter. Click on the thumbnail and this will bring you to the pattern page. Up in the right hand corner of the pattern page, you'll notice a few different options. What we're looking at today is the add to queue option. I used to think that the best way to keep tabs on a pattern that caught my eye, but that I didn't necessarily know when or with what I would cast on, I thought adding it to the queue was the best way to do that. But now I know that adding it to my favorites is much more functional for how the Ravelry platform is set up to work with your making practice. So let's go over why you would add Add something to the queue. The queue is much more structured. It allows you to input relevant deadlines, any yarn that you'll be using, and other notes that you may want to have associated with the pattern so you can remember as you make your making plans. So let's go ahead and click add to queue. You'll see a pop-up window with a lot of different fields that you can populate. Now, here's where I really need to plug utilizing the Ravelry stash feature. There already are two different videos in the Ravelry user guide playlist that go over the benefits of the Ravelry stash feature. The first being how to log yarn in the Ravelry stash and the second being how to use yarn from your stash in a Ravelry project. Here's another great function for the Ravelry stash feature in that you can allocate yarn from your stash when queuing a pattern on your horizon. So under the yarn name field, you'll see that there is a box that you can type in any yarn that you're thinking of using. But if you have logged your yarn in the Ravelry stash feature, this is so cool. Click on use stash yarn and the pop-up window changes to show you all of the yarn that you have logged that fits the bill of the yarn called for in the pattern you're queuing. You can see that automatically the yarn is filtered to light fingering, but if I wanted to adjust the yarn weight, I certainly could do that. But just with a quick glance, I see I have three pages worth of yarn that may work for this pattern. But I know for the size that I'm going to make, I'm probably going to need more than just one skein of fingering weight yarn. In fact, the smallest size listed at the top of this Q pop-up window indicates that the minimum yardage is 877 yards. So let's just say I've decided I'm going to use this Beachy Breeze Fibers Boardwalk Sock in the colorway purple underpants. I have 1300 yards of this yarn, so I think it's safe to assume I can make the Stromboli with this yarn. So I'll click the button that says use, and you can see that the yarn has populated above to say that I'm allocating this yarn to knit this pattern. If I continue to scroll, you can see that there are multiple other fields that you can populate. Any tags that you'd like to put with this queued item for organization, if you'd like to make a note of who it's being made for, or the date you'd like to finish by, and then any other relevant notes that may be applicable. Once you're satisfied with the fields you've populated, go ahead and click Save Changes. If I scroll back up to the top of this pattern page, I see that it no longer says add to queue, but now it says that this pattern is number 16 in my queue. Okay, great, so that's a quick way to get a pattern in your queue. Now let's look at the queue as a whole. Again, bring your mouse to the My Notebook feature in the upper right hand corner and select queue. 
this brings up a page with a view of all of the patterns you've queued. Now, as I mentioned, I used to think that the best way to keep track of patterns that I liked and that I wanted to knit one day was to add it to my Ravelry queue. I had hundreds of patterns saved in my queue and it just wasn't, it wasn't using the functionality of this feature to its full potential. Really, the queue feature is best used when you have more concrete plans. So let's look at what my queue looks like. Up here at the top, I've queued Christmas stockings. I've listed the yarn from my stash that I plan to use, and I've added the due date. These should be done by December 1st. If I scroll down, we can see more items in my queue, as well as what yarn I've allocated for that project. Now, here's something really cool about the queue feature. You can add as many different stash items as you want for one item in your queue. So for instance, the simple sock pattern by Dean and Bean Sock Machines, I plan to use these skeins to make multiple pairs of socks. So I can look at this and say, okay, this is multiple pairs of socks. This isn't necessarily scrappy socks. I could add that in a note to the queued feature if I wanted to make sure I remembered it. If I had any thought that maybe the future version of myself would look at this and think, why did I allocate so many skeins? But even cooler than that, let's look at number 11 in my queue, the Oregon cardigan. Now, this is where I have to have a little bit of humble pie. I have been preaching about the Ravelry stash feature, but I am so sorry to admit that I have not yet logged the yarn in my stash to knit this cardigan with. I have the Oregon cardigan kit, so I have the Alice Starmore Hebridean two ply, all of the colorways that I need to make this sweater, but I haven't logged those yarns in my stash on Ravelry because it's just so much. It's so many different colors, so many different quantities that I just have been putting it off. But that's okay because it means I get to show you this very cool feature. So the pattern calls for either Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight or Alice Starmore Hebridean two ply. Now I have quite a bit of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight logged in my Ravelry stash. So Ravelry, the intuitive platform that it can be, has listed possible stash items that I could use when knitting this pattern. I think that's so cool because if you're looking at a pattern but you're not quite sure what yarn you should use from your stash, Ravelry has your back and will tell you some ideas that it's pulled from what you've logged in the platform. Now, okay, let's focus back and go back to the Stromboli. So, since this was my most recently queued pattern, it's number 16. But what if I want to adjust the order of my queue? Let's say my plans have changed and I need to cast on the Stromboli immediately or I'll die, or it feels like that sometimes with our making projects. So I can easily change the order. Simply highlight the number that it currently is and change it to the number you want it to be. So let's say I need it to be number one. Once you've entered that into the numbered box, take your mouse to the bottom right hand corner and click save new order. Now the page has refreshed and the Stromboli is at the number one spot. Now let's say I got a little too excited and I still need to make these Christmas stockings before I worry about the Stromboli. To reorder it so that the Christmas stockings are in first place, all I have to do is click the blue arrow to the left of the numbered box. You can see the page refresh and now the Christmas stockings are at the top. Now what if you want to rearrange the queue in a much more robust way, moving multiple patterns at once? That's easy too. Just click the list of numbers underneath any numbered box. This brings you to a view of your queue where you can move multiple patterns at a time without having to save each different change you make. Once you're satisfied with your changes that you can make in any structured or chaotic way that you want, simply click save changes and that will bring you to an updated view of your queue that reflects the reordering you just did. So the queue feature is super functional. I highly recommend considering to utilize this feature, especially when paired 
with the stash feature on Ravelry. Together, they make the functionality of this platform really enjoyable. This is a great way to make the platform work for you and work smarter, not harder when finding the next pattern you want to make. So I hope that was helpful. Happy searching, happy queuing, and I'll see you later.